Northern Ireland appeals for calm after petrol bombs were hurled at a police vehicle in Derry, ahead of US President Joe Biden's landmark visit. Taiwan maintains patrols after Chinese warships and aircraft are still seen in the vicinity a day after Beijing's drills end. Police in Northern Ireland are on high alert ahead of US President Joe Biden's visit after officers were firebombed by dissident Republicans on Monday. Around 20 petrol bombs were hurled at an armoured police Land Rover amid a rally in Derry's predominantly Catholic Craigan estate, prompting officers to appeal for calm. Preparations to welcome the US President are underway elsewhere, particularly in the town of Ballina in County Mayo the ancestral home of one of Biden's great-great-grandfathers who left for the United States in 1850. He is due to arrive in Belfast on Tuesday evening to mark the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Peace Accord. Biden's four-day trip will include a speech at Ulster University before he crosses the border into the Republic, where he will spend three nights meeting with the country's leaders, touring key landmarks and addressing the Irish Parliament. Taiwan says it's detected Chinese warships and aircraft still operating in the vicinity of the island. This comes a day after Beijing said it had completed three days of military exercises amid heightened tension in the region. Taipei says it's maintaining military vigilance after the war games, during which Beijing simulated targeted strikes and ended with a practice blockade of the island, which it views as its own. Meanwhile, the United States, which supports Taiwan's autonomy, and the Philippines have launched their largest joint military exercise in decades. Some 18,000 troops will be on joint maneuvers until the 28th of April, including live fire exercises and a boat sinking rocket assault. They're taking place for the first time under the presidency of Ferdinand Marcus Jr., who's trying to improve diplomatic ties with Washington. The drills are seen by analysts as a challenge to China's dominance in the region. Rescue workers are continuing to search for survivors after a building collapsed in the southern French city of Marseille on Sunday following an explosion. So far, six bodies have been found, but two people are still missing. On poursuit les, les actions de, de déblaiement et de recherche dans l'espoir de, de retrouver des victimes. Uh, donc voilà, ça c'est sans cesse, on continue, on a toujours espoir. Residents living in areas adjacent to Tivoli Street, where the explosion occurred, have been evacuated from their homes as they wait for experts to determine if the buildings are safe. Au départ, ils nous ont dit, c est, c est, prenez vos affaires pour un jour. On, pensait, on a pris pour un jour. En plus, on a eu cinq minutes pour partir. Donc là, on est revenu chercher les affaires parce qu'on ne sait pas combien ça va durer. Ça peut durer une semaine, ça peut le temps qu'il y ait des experts qui viennent pour, pour uh, voir les, les, les immeubles dans l'état où ils sont. On Monday evening, a prayer vigil was held at a church near the site. It's not yet known what caused the explosion, but investigators are looking into the possibility that it could have been from a gas leak. It's one of the rare positive moments of the war. Russia and Ukraine conducted a new prisoner exchange on Monday, with Ukraine repatriating this group of 80 men and 20 women. Ukrainian officials say about half of the returning troops have serious injuries or have been tortured. Russia also announced the return of 106 soldiers who were captured at the front and, according to Moscow, were in danger of death. <laughs> Meanwhile, Russian troops continued to push deeper and deeper into Bakhmut. The Russia-backed leader of the Donetsk region, Denis Pushilin, on Monday visited a part of the city under Russian control. He said Moscow will rebuild once it conquers it completely.
Moscow may try to use the upcoming Orthodox Easter holiday on the 16th of April to delay Ukrainian counteroffensives by calling for a ceasefire out of respect for religion, the Institute for the Study of War says in its daily update. The Kremlin has selectively called for ceasefires around religious holidays to influence the situation on the front lines. Moscow, for example, refused a ceasefire during Orthodox Easter in 2022, quote, in order not to give the Kiev nationalists a break, unquote, during the Battle of Mariupol. The U.S. think tank says the Kremlin likely refused a ceasefire because Russian forces still held the initiative on the front lines at the time, but saw the ceasefire months later over Orthodox Christmas to obtain additional time to prepare Russian forces for winter offensive. Now, the Kremlin may call for an Easter ceasefire because such a pause would disproportionately benefit Russian troops and allow them to secure their gains in urban Bakhmut and to prepare defenses against Ukraine's spring counteroffensive. Ukrainian and Russian sources discussed the decreased rate of Russian offensive operations along the entire front line over the past weekend. Russian forces continued to conduct ground attacks in and around Bakhmut and on the Avdiivka Donetsk city line. Russian forces likely made marginal gains in southern Bakhmut. The UK Defence Ministry says over the last seven days, Russia has likely increased its armoured assaults around the Donetsk region town of Marienka. This is about 20 kilometres southwest of Donetsk city. Marienka has been fought over since 2014 and has been largely destroyed by artillery exchanges. It commands the approaches to Donetsk and the key road. Russia continues to give a high priority to resourcing operations in the broader Donetsk sector, including the Marienka and Avdivka areas, expending significant resources for minimal gains. The Institute for the Study of War says the dynamics of battlefield artillery usage in Ukraine reflect the fact that Russian forces are using artillery to offset their degraded offensive capabilities. The World Bank and International Monetary Fund's annual spring meetings kick off this week with concerns over high inflation, rising geopolitical tension and financial stability. One of those tensions is the war in Ukraine. The IMF head speaking ahead of the gathering said it could be stopped with just one decision by the country that started it. This war has distracted the world's attention from many other pressing uh, problems. This war not only kills people, it is pushing up food prices, you talked about it, and it is creating more geopolitical tensions, pushing down the ability of the world to work as one. Meanwhile, in Ukraine, residents in the port city of Kherson are clearing up again after a new round of Russian shelling, which this time also hit a local art museum. Elsewhere, the Kremlin-appointed head of the Donetsk region has released images of his visit to the outskirts of Bakhmut. The video shows ruined blocks of flats and other heavily shelled buildings. The city has been all but destroyed in eight months of fighting in what has become the longest and bloodiest battle in Russia's year-long assault on Ukraine. Thousands of Israeli settlers marched through the occupied West Bank on Monday to a former Jewish settlement that was evacuated two years ago. The massive demonstration was led by at least seven members of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's cabinet, signaling the government's determination to accelerate settlement building in the occupied territories despite international opposition. Thousands of Israeli police and military forces were reportedly deployed to protect the march. They fired tear gas at Palestinians in a nearby village who hurled stones at the soldiers to protest the demonstration. At least two people, including a journalist, were reportedly shot by Israeli rubber bullets. Also on Monday, Israeli troops killed a 15-year-old Palestinian teenager during a raid in a refugee camp near Jericho. 
an Israeli British woman who was wounded in the West Bank on Friday and the Palestinian attack that killed her two daughters has also died. Tension is also high in Jerusalem after Israeli forces stormed the Al-Aqsa Mosque twice last Wednesday. Last Friday, Israel announced the mobilization of its reserve police units and military reinforcements. At least six people are dead and several others injured after an avalanche struck the French Alps on Sunday. The snowfall took place shortly before noon near the Armoncet Glacier on Mont Blanc, outside of resorts dedicated to winter sports. While the region is prone to avalanches, officials say this was one of the deadliest in years. Authorities say the death toll includes two mountain guides from Saint-Gervais. A sixth fatality was announced on Monday after authorities said they were still searching for a missing person. Ahead of King Charles III's coronation next month, preparations for the big day are full steam ahead. Two coaches will be used on May the 6th. The more modern Diamond Jubilee State Coach will take the King and Queen Consort to Westminster Abbey in the morning in time for the 11 o'clock ceremony. And the 260-year-old Gold State Coach will carry the royals back to Buckingham Palace. This coach will be the centrepiece of the much larger and longer procession from Westminster Abbey back to Buckingham Palace on Coronation Day. The coach is huge, you might be able to tell that from how I'm standing beside it. It's nearly four metres tall, it's over seven metres long, it weighs four tonnes. Because of that, it can only be used at a walking pace, which really adds to the majesty and the stateliness of this great royal procession. After the solemn ceremony, the coronation procession will include armed forces from across the Commonwealth, the British Overseas Territories and the UK.